Okay, so quick review on the Citroen C3 Picasso. The Beast. This one's a 1.6, I think it's a 1560 cc diesel. Um, I quite like Citroens. I've got a bit of a soft spot for them. My dad always had quite a few Citroens. And at the time I hated them because I just thought they were sort of woolly and a bit naff, a bit cheap. No performance and all that sort of stuff. But as I've got older and the more sort of cars I drive, the more I drive these Audis and BMWs and stuff, which are all well and good. And you know, they are kind of the best quality in some ways. I do find that Citroen actually has a lot more to offer in different ways. They don't try to be the most luxurious, they don't try to be the most expensive, they're actually there to be reasonable value. And there are plenty of people out there who don't really care about cars that much. You know, they don't necessarily want the, you know, the best sort of poser machine or something that handles in the best way with, you know, a six cylinder engine or what have you. They just want something to get them from A to B practically with a bit of comfort, a bit of space reasonably cheaply and that's where kind of companies like Citroen come in I think and you know they, they did the 2CV years ago that was quirky and weird and hated by some but loved by others and I think it's a fantastic car you know they, they, they come out with stuff that kind of offers a little bit of something different quite often I, I kind of respect that really um, so this car they're very cheap used um, this one's about three and a half years old now, I think. I think it was only about 11 grand, practically new. So ridiculously cheap car, really. Um, it returns, on average, 47 to the gallon, and that's been over the last 20,000 miles since new. Um, you know, it's not absolutely amazing, but, but I, I think that is amazing. I think that's fantastic fuel economy. I'm used to petrol V8s and things like that, so 47 to the gallon for me is fantastic. And to be fair, lots of these cars that come out nowadays, they talk about 50, 60 plus miles per gallon. Most of them don't achieve it <coughs> anyway, so 47 I think as an average is very good. Particularly if you're not paying very much for the car to begin with as well. Ride quality is fairly typical of this type of car, it's pretty good, it's not amazing, it's not a Rolls Royce, it's not Mercedes S-Class or anything like that, but it does ride quite nicely. I'm driving around country lanes, there's loads of potholes and you know, it's a pretty rough road um, and it doesn't absorb absolutely everything but it's, you know, it's reasonably springy, it, the, damp, the dampening is, the damping is, is fairly good and there is reasonable control as well, you can chuck it around a corner without feeling like you're gonna completely freak yourself out as well. Sorry, battery's playing up. Yeah, you can throw it around a corner without feeling like you're going to completely roll over and, and crash as well. There's reasonable control there. The steering does have a little bit of life to it. It's not completely numb. Um, you know, I've driven expensive Audis that have much more numb, disconnected kind of steering than this. You know, so gear change as a manual, it's okay. If you, like I say, if you're not bothered about driving particularly, then you're not going to care that much. It's not a pleasurable gear change to, to use, particularly. It doesn't feel you know, amazingly oiled and mechanical like some cars, but it's okay, it does the job. If you rush it, it's not gonna like it very much, but it's, it's all right. It's got that sort of notchiness that you get from a cheap sort of French car, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's just, it's an economical, it's a cheap to buy in the first place car, basically. You know, you're not gonna get anything crazy out of it but um, it does the job basically and not everyone who drives necessarily wants the most flashy vehicle like I said before it's for the people who buy this sort of car they want practicality this one's got decent air conditioning um, they're quite quirky inside you've got the digital dash which is okay to be fair it doesn't look great but it is very clear you can see what speed you're doing very clearly um, you know, there are cars much more expensive than this that are supposed to be so flash and so fantastic and you can barely see the speedo because the driving position puts the steering wheel half in the way. Here, you just glance up and you can see exactly what you're doing. Um, it's just practical. You know, you might say it's a bit of an old person's car. Well, maybe, but getting getting to from A to B, it's, it's fine. There's plenty of space. Um, I've got a, a Galaxy 
which is much bigger than this, but this feels fairly comparable in terms of cabin space. I can I can spread out and I'm absolutely fine. I've got plenty of headroom. I'm six foot one and there's loads of headroom. I'm fairly broad and there's loads of shoulder room as well in these seats. The seats are reasonably supportive. There's not a great deal of lumbar support, which I don't like very much. That you know, but other than that, they, they feel quite firm. They're quite nice. Um, I've got a boy behind me in his car seat, and there's a reasonable amount of legroom back there for, for adults. It's not too bad. Um, the boot is a decent size. We've got parking sensors on this one. Uh, they're just rear parking sensors on this one, but you can spec these cars, you know, roughly however you like. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't have a hell of a lot to say about this car really other than that it is cheap to buy it's cheap to run i personally think the design is quite nice it looks quite different they've been around for a few years now but you know i quite like citroen for the fact that they they push things a bit with their styling sometimes and you'll get people who hate it you'll get people who like it that's but that's good you know audi might be a very popular brand but let's face it they're pretty dull i've just bought myself an a6 so i feel like i can say that if i like you know, they're, they're handsome cars, Audis, but they're very boring. They all look the same at the end of the day. At least Citroen kind of make a bit of an effort to try and do things a bit differently. And I quite like that. So if, you, if you're not scared of having something that's a bit quirky looking, that isn't particularly cool, maybe, whatever you decide cool is, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, think, I think having a, a cheap car, something that's sensible to run, I think that is quite cool. I think going around in flash cars is actually a bit... I like flash cars, I like performance cars, but I think they make you look a bit of a, a fool, to be honest. I think this is quite a cool car. It's, it's cheap, it's, it's easy, it's practical. Yeah, if that's the sort of thing you want, then, then go for it. The Citroen C3 Picasso.